I turned myself into a pickle! I'm Pickle Rick! Pickle Rick! Hi, everybody. Psychoro here. It is June 20th. Starting a little late today. I was uploading some uh, streaming monologues to YouTube, which... The Friday 13th uh, series of streams I did for the past couple of days actually got some views, which I'm really happy for. So uh, I've been looking to do more s shorter, smaller, <coughs> excuse me, more compact YouTube content because, uh, you know, uploading these streams, they're like an average of about three hours. Not everybody has a time to scrub through or just sit and watch. That's what streaming is for here on Twitch. Uh, so I figured, hey, I've been talking about a lot of interesting prospects, or uh, I'm sorry, a lot of interesting subjects. So I'm going to just go through the video on demand highlighter uh, on Twitch. So needless to say, today's stream, like with this monologue here, uh, once the stream is up, I'll go back to that content Twitch. I'll highlight what I want to output. Uh, I'll save that output, and then I'll import that output to YouTube. Uh, so the past couple of days, I was streaming Friday the 13th game. The first day was the, I guess you could say, I always hold my can here when I'm talking, and I usually do. I'm like a guy in a bar who, like, he talks, and, like, when he flings his wrist, like, some alcohol comes out and hits someone in his face. Let me put that down. So the first day, I was streaming Friday the 13th on PC, on modded, and then yesterday, the second day, first day was Saturday, second day was yesterday. First day... PC release of Friday 13th cracked, no online hooks, restricted to three Jasons and maps. Yesterday was the Friday 13th Complete Edition and showcasing what it has with offline and online. Even though I was playing online, I was still explaining myself as to what it was. So uh, with all of my Friday 13th streaming, I kind of forgot where I was in Halo 4. But needless to say, in today's gaming landscape, organizing. Needless to say, in today's gaming landscape, it's not about owning a game like, say, Master Chief. We own a license. Do not own the game. The more and more I think about it, the more and more, like, aggravating it becomes. Because, say, for instance, Master Chief Collection. I don't know. What if the entire Microsoft service, online, Xbox gaming division, just, it was nuked. Like, Skynet was like, I don't see humanity as a threat. I see Microsoft as a threat. Nintendo and Sony are fine. I'm Skynet. All I care about is Microsoft. So I'm going to nuke the servers. I'm not going to be able to be, uh, I'm not going to be able to enjoy Master Chief. I mean, I still do have the most important Halo, in my opinion, preserved. I have the original PC version, uh, which I need to look into. It has an excellent modding suite called SPV3. And within the next couple of weeks, regardless of what streaming I'm doing in the background, I'm going to be looking into it. And I'd like to stream that because Halo is important. But that's a conversation from another stream. Uh, I'm not going to be able to enjoy Master Chief kind of sucks, right? Now, I do have the physical disc in storage, uh, along with a couple of other Halo games, but that's neither here nor there, because the disc is essentially just a, a digital flag now, because once I insert a disc and install it, my Xbox is still going to look for all of the update files. Again, stopping and thinking about that, it's kind of bullshit, because I don't own all of the updates and patches and content that was later released for Master Chief. So I believe on the base disc it was Halo 1 through 4 in its original iteration. So if I was to install it offline, like it would be the broken, busted, and buggy version of Master Chief. It is what it is. And, and unfortunately, in today's gaming landscape, we have to deal with that. Uh, oh, I purchased Friday the 13th, the game. Oh, well. I'm not going to be able to enjoy that. The fact that we've been conditioned to that mindset is ridiculous. I mean, we could all look back and say, hey, man, I remember like when I was a kid, and I'm talking mostly from my own uh, experiences here. 
man, it was great going to Toys R Us with your parents or your grandmother, which my grandmother fucking spoiled the shit out of me. My German, well, both my grandmothers, my German on my father's side grandmother and my mother's on my Italian side grandmother. Uh, my Italian grandmother got me a Super Nintendo, a Sega Genesis, a PlayStation. Like, she spoiled me. And then I remember going with my German grandmother, especially to Toys R Us, and she's like, what do you want to get? If you want a video game, let's go and get one. And I got, like, Marvel vs. Capcom for the Dreamcast. Like, I had to go to the gaming section, actively look for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on Dreamcast. It was all alphabetized, of course. There's the there's the the uh, the print of the game's card with the... Uh, they were like index cards. It was like fifty nine ninety nine, forty nine ninety nine. You take the card, you go to the cash register, you pay for it. They staple your receipt to the card, and they're like, "Hey kid, go over there uh, to the front of the store and hand the clerk your uh, your paid receipt. They'll get the game." And then you go, and the guy he takes your receipt. I talked about this on a previous stream. He takes your receipt and he looks at it. He goes, "I'll be right back." And remember, uh, the game section in Toys R Us was towards the front of the store, so they made like this long like encased hallway and plexiglass with all the games behind it like you could actively see it when you walk into toys r us and this was great because as a kid you're like i wish i could own all this now we have emulation so that's easy but back then it wasn't a thing so you know as a kid your eyes just blew like grew and glowed you're like wow i wish i could emulate this. so you know you'd you, again you'd hand the clerk your paid receipt and you'd see him actively walk a certain point in the aisle because everything was categorized and alphabetized and copy of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and he handed it to you. And just like this can, you're like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Man, I don't have to go to the arcades anymore. I still could because now I could practice at home. So, you know, you're, you, you're holding this item in your hand and you take off the cellophane, the shrink wrap and you open the case up and there's your manual. And you're leafing through the menu. You're like, oh, what are the controls? Cool. Oh, what are the tips they got here? Oh, look at these screenshots. This is arcade. You don't have that anymore. You know, and the point of bringing this up, and I've been harping on this hardcore recently, but for good reason, because all the games we own, we do not own a physical version of it. We own a digital footprint that is a license now. And of course, there are games that you can play offline, okay? That's fine, but now say your hard drive fails, or the servers to the game go down, or the game like Friday the 13th, which is my main talking point lately, is going to be pulled from, from the digital storefront. We can't access this anymore. So if your hard drive to shit the bed, or your Xbox goes in for maintenance and you, know, you get it back and it's wiped and you have to re-download everything, the majority of those games are not going to be available anymore that we paid for. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with the fact that the things we, air quotes, I'm putting my hand up again, the things that we own are not ours? If you remember, whenever you would turn on a Sega Genesis game, it's a buyer under license from Sega Enterprises LLC. The cartridge you owned was a license that you paid for, but like a physical driver's license, you have that license in your possession and it is yours. Like, I always keep my licenses, like, whenever I go to AAA or the... I haven't been to the DMV in years. DMV is essentially hell on earth. Miserable. But needless to say, when I go to uh, AAA, and I'm like, yeah, I'd like to renew my license. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, here, here's your new one. Where's your old one? Oh, I, I lost it. Sorry. So, like, oh, yeah. I still have an old license, which I use because I hate the picture. I, I, was, I was much heavier then. I was, like, 70 pounds heavier. And, like, my face looked bullshit. But um, let me actually take a sip from this. But with the subject of mind lately, it's such a shame. And, and I talk about this constantly. But to people who come here regularly and watch my stuff, I, I, I constantly bring up stuff. But it's important. With emulation, you know, like uh, RGT85, who's a great YouTuber. He's awesome. I love him. I think he lives in Connecticut. Uh, actually, you know what? I I'm going to just pause this monologue for a sec here. Uh, and I'm going to adjust the chroma. Oops. I'm going to adjust the chroma on my webcam. I have a little bit of uh, artifacting behind me. So we're going to up this. What I originally had at the other time. I got a scarf from an awesome viewer of mine. 
audience member. And I tried to make it appear better, so I had to adjust my chroma. Anyway, that's why I'm a huge supporter of emulation. Uh, RGT85 talked about this too, why emulation is so awesome. You, you could go above and beyond what conventional console means at the time allowed. So this is a perfect example. Duck Station and I believe... Uh, I can't remember the name of the other emulator. I'm trying to think, and I'm drawing a blank. Hold on a second. I do have it, actually. EPSXE. That's the other really good PlayStation emulator. So I have EPSXE version 2.0.5 and Duck Station. So these emulators, let's just say, uh, what's a like a really good 3D game for PlayStation? There's two that come to mind. So there is Metal Gear Solid and there is Vagrant Story. Now, if you look back at reviews and when these games originally came out, Vagrant Story, especially Vagrant Story and Metal Gear Solid, are two of the best-looking games on the PlayStation. Now, if you take those games and you run them through emulation, you could up the resolution, you could get rid of the warble effect that uh, the PlayStation was known for. There was something with its renderer when you are playing Tomb Raider, Metal Gear Solid, where, like, textures... Putting my can down again. Textures um, in your, like, your peripherals were, were wobbly. So if you look at, say, Mega Man Legends, I believe it was, the, where Tron Bond was first introduced. If you look at Mega Man Legends on PlayStation, where it first debuted, and then the N64 port that came out several years later, I believe it was three or four years later, the N64 version looks noticeably better because it doesn't have that warble. It doesn't have those polygons shifting around. The emulator could get rid of grabbing a tissue. The, M the, PS the PlayStation emulator gets rid of that. And you could... I apologize for that. I don't, but I had to. I know this is wrong. You could take any PlayStation game up the resolution to 2K, 4K, 1080p. You could uh, you could apply filters to graphics for textures. Uh, low times are non-existent. There are mod packs out there for uh, people who figured out how to mod particular PlayStation games. So needless to say, the earlier the games are. Um, the earlier the games are in console history, so like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, like 16-bit stuff, and then like early 32-bit stuff, like Saturn, PlayStation. Those are harder to mod, but there are ways to go ahead and do that. And the emulation community uh, has done like graphical mods and sprite edits to like any type of 16- uh, or 8-bit game. But the whole point of this is, yes, we do have the ability to make games look better. We do have the ability to now play games online. There are server hooks that were created to say, if I want to play Contra with somebody on NES from, like, California, like, create a room and invite somebody to play with you. Couldn't do that originally. But even with all those perks and benefits and, you know, enhancements aside, the, the idea with emulation is you are preserving games that are hard to find, or that are super expensive or more or less unobtainable today. So if I want to, and this is the best example, if I wanted to, say, stream Chrono Trigger on Super NES. So now I would have to make sure that I have a capture card that allows for audio-video cables. If anybody remembers, the red, white, and yellow cable came with uh, Nintendo as a standard. Uh, from the NES to the GameCube, that was a standard. It was this, uh, like this little rectangular port in the back of the system that had like a little tab on the top center. You'd plug it in. They use the same technology a decade. Uh, but then they uh, allow, uh, then, blah, blah, blah. then they introduced component cables and composite cables and then now the standard for everything which is HDMI. So I could also go online and purchase an HDMI converter for my Super Nintendo. So if I wanted to back to where I started with this, if I wanted to stream Chrono Trigger I would have to either own or purchase a Super Nintendo console, which, depending on its condition or its, uh, it, that's what I'm looking for, complete in the box or not, it would be upwards of like 300 bucks. Chrono Trigger, if you want a mint copy, it's going to cost you 350 plus. Or you could find a loose copy for 50 bucks. 
And then I got to make sure the controllers function and the hardware is working. It's, it's hardware. It's going to fail at one point, depending on how well you take care of it. The better you take care of it, the longer it'll last. Any collector will tell you that. So I'm just looking at like 600 bucks to something that might not even work through uh, current capture means. And of course, I'm pointing towards uh, my Elgato capture card, NEP capture card. Or I could do some due diligence online, find the ROM and a proper emulator, which, uh, what is it? SNES, ZSNES. I don't know if it is. ZSNES is the best emulator. And then I could up the resolution, have high res modes. Emulation allows for us to preserve games and enjoy them when we want to. Don't have to be reliant on auction sites paying hundreds of dollars or waiting for Nintendo to release on their somewhat okay quality Nintendo Switch Online, NSO service. And it's ridiculous. And I talked about this at Friday the 13th because whenever we think of emulation, we immediately cry piracy. That is a knee-jerk reaction because it's not what we're conditioned to. We are now conditioned in a day and age, of this day and age, I should say, to where we own, we own a license of something. We don't, we don't physically quantifiably own this thing. It's on a server somewhere, and we download it. What is wrong with that? I don't agree with that. And that was my whole point of streaming Friday the 13th past couple of, past, past couple of days, because it, it proves a point that what is wrong with all of this, you know? And, and one more time on Friday the 13th, it, it is an excellent passion project for people who genuinely love Friday the 13th. And it shows. It plays like the films. It, it, again, it's janky. It's cheesy. It's kind of stupid. Uh, you know, it's you laugh at it more than you are scared at it. But that's what happens when you watch Friday the 13th Part 6. Like, it's, it's really stupid. It's like, why is a guy going to a cemetery and digging up a body and then freaking out and stabbing it with, like, uh, an iron-like stake He's like, damn it, Jason, die! And then, like, lightning strikes it, and Jason is suddenly reanimated. You're thinking, like, what? Well, I guess he was just buried? Like, you know, he, he wasn't preserved with formaldehyde and his organs were removed. All he needs is a jolt of lightning. He needs 1.21 gigawatts of electricity to function again. And then he goes around killing everybody through cheesy memes. You know, you have, like, sleazy, scantily clad chicks, like, making out and having sex, and they're dead, and there's, like, blood splatters, and... Music swells, and it's really jank and cheesy. But that's the point of Friday the 13th. And now it's going to be gone. Something we paid for, something we own. Putting my can down again. Air quotes that we own. Doesn't matter. It's gone. It's because what they want. Now, if I had a Super Nintendo, either through emulation means, archived and documented, on my PC's hard drive with multiple spare copies through... Uh, flash drives, thumbnail drives, uh, spare portable hard drives. I don't have to worry about losing my shit because it's there for me to use when I want to. That's what gaming should be. It is something that we should be able to go back without restrictions, without licenses or DRMs. Or... It's so ridiculous, man. And again, my streaming is my livelihood. I'm, not making, I'm hardly making anything on this, and I have hopes to make it, which... I know I have all the ingredients to do so. I just need to get noticed. But all of my streaming comes from the fact that it's on my Xbox Series X here. What happens if this all goes down tomorrow? I can't do anything about it. I have a $500 console that is now a fucking paperweight because services are down. And again, you have a Super Nintendo and you have the cartridge or you have a ROM file that you can load onto your PC whenever you want or insert and play whenever you want. That's what gaming should be. Our rights to own stuff has been taken away from us. But it has all been shrouded in the illusion of... What's the word I'm looking for? Convenience. We gave up the ability to own things because we want it to be more... Like, I, I have a Blu-ray collection. I have about... I'm looking at them all right now. They're all in these little I, Ikea uh, cubbies. I have about 160 Blu-rays around that number. Uh, it's it's really nice to just hit a button on Netflix or for Netflix and find uh, I don't know on HBO Max for instance Batman the 1989 Tim Burton version I could come down here and grab my Blu-ray literally come down the stairs grab my Blu-ray 
go upstairs, insert it into the disc tray, close it, if you remember that, and play it. But for convenience's sake, I could just hit two buttons, and it's on Netflix. But what if Netflix goes down tomorrow? That's the point. It, it's, it's so maddening, and just it, it really sucks that it's come to this. You know, for better, for worse, for more, for worse than for better, it's come to this. Shame, man, it really is. And and again, as somebody who does this for a living, like knowing that, I would say seventy percent of all the things I stream are locked behind Xbox because that's my main platform. It's just, if you stop and think about it, it sucks. It really sucks. And, and there's not much we could do about it because, you know, all those, uh, do you agree? Yes. Uh, do you agree to these terms? Yes. We agree to all this shit without even realizing what it means. And it's, it's a byproduct of our convenience. It sucks. I feel like there should be a flask full of, like, whiskey instead of, like, a Red Bull because I'm tired today. I woke up really late. Such a shame. Yeah. All right, guys. Stream's over. We're done. Have a great day. So, going on to Halo here, okay? The original Halo trilogy... And then Reach and ODST. Uh, the original Halo trilogy caught Bungie a lot. And then ODST showcased that they could do... I almost said showed. Showcased that Bungie could tell a really good, like, human element story. To everybody else that is not Master Chief. ODST is really good. Is it really the best story? I wouldn't say that. But it's moment-to-moment -moment interactions between human characters is really good. And and it shows you that, yes, with Master Chief, you're nearly unstoppable. You're taking out the Covenant. You're, th there are no repercussions for Master Chief. Maybe, like, he's, I mean, Statue of Limitations on spoilers, like, he dies, like, oh my god, that's terrible. And, like, all of your Marine friends around you are dying, right? Like, Blood Stage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But when you're playing ODST, like, your comrades die. Like, you're human. Like, there's the stakes are really high. And ODST reminds you of that. And then we look at Halo Reach, which is Bungie's swan song, like love letter to the franchise they helped create and establish before we moved on to 343, which we I, I don't think we knew at the time. But we're like, oh, this is going to be like Bungie's last hurrah here with Reach. And that was the human element, the, I'm sorry, the human element injected into super soldiers. So you were a Spartan. You know, you were trained for this. You, you from childhood, you were bred for this. You had this like super awesome armor, the Melanier armor. I don't know how the fuck you say it. Melanier, Melanier, Mulaner, I have no idea. But Melanier, that's how I pronounce it. Like you have this badass armor and you know, you're trained for this, but your teammates are dying around you. You know the writing's on the wall for yourself, so you're fighting to survive at least enough to bring Cortana to keep and you have a last stand to make sure that they're focused on you rather than a pillar of autumn going away. So I'm mentioning all of this because, you know, I'm very familiar with Halo, especially the first Halo. The first Halo is still impossibly good. So I took a, you know, a few days break from Halo 4, actually. I streamed this on uh, Thursday. I started Halo 4. Pretty good. I would, I, you know, I wouldn't say pretty good, but it's half decent. At least from a gameplay perspective. Story? And I think this is where everybody kind of shits all over 343. Narratively comparative to, comparative, uh, to, narratively compared to the first three Halo games. Actually compared to the original Halo and Halo Reach. Let's just use Halo and Halo Reach. I could... I... Halo is still fresh in my mind. I'm trying to think of a proper way to, uh, to dialogue this here, but the first Halo was just such an excellent ride, man. I mean, it started off, you know, you're corridor-based, Covenant's at shit, stay high. Then you leave your ship and you get jettisoned onto the, the ring world, and you're like, dude, like, this, this is like a planet, but we're on, the, like, you know, you look up to the skybox and you see that you're on this ring planet. And then you learn that the Covenant is after you. They're like, there's just this menacing presence. And, it's like, and then you learn about why they are on Halo. 
and why they're trying to stop you, and it's the flood. And then you get this other, like, jump in the stakes through another uh, through another narrative hook. It's like the flood, holy shit. And now the flood is trying to kill you and the covenant. And then you meet Guilty Spark. And Guilty Spark, hey, I can help you stop this. So you get the key to fire off Halo. And you're like, hey, you know, the, the Halo is going to stop the flood. It's like, no, the Halo is going to stop everything. So now you have this other narrative element that just escalates everything. And then it all culminates in a great way when uh, Halo concludes, right? And then you look at Halo Reach. I'm not going to talk about Halo 2. Look at Halo Reach. And I will say I'm not going to talk about 2 or 3 because the story's favorite then. Then you look at Halo Reach. And Halo Reach isn't really about the story per se. I mean, if you stop and think, like, the story to Halo Reach, it's paper thin as well, right? You know, you're doing your rounds on Reach and you find the Covenant. And then you need to deliver Cortana uh, from Captain Halsey to Pillar of Autumn. That's pretty much the story of Halo Reach, right? But Halo's Reach story sings and soars above the rest when you look at the relationships between Noble Six. You know, you look at uh, John, George, Cat, Carter, and you. And, you know, George sacrifices himself to blow up the Covenant. The, the, the Corvette it does not look like a Corvette, but the Corvette ship. And then Cat gets sniped, and Carter sacrifices himself to make sure you and Emil get to where you need to go. And then Emil sacrifices himself because he knows that you're delivering Cortana and you need to hold off the Covenants so the Pillar of Autumn again can fly away, leading to the... So the magic in Reach is its, again, human element and interactions. So we take all of that and we, we summarize just to how good the narrative is in the original Halo. I would say Halo and Halo Reach. And you compartmentalize that. You're like, okay, this is right here. This here is the important aspects of the original Halo story. And you're like, can you play Halo 4? Now, Halo 4 plays greatly. I, I think this, the, the, game, the, end, the gameplay engine in this is really good. I would go as far to say that the entire engine here was given to 343 from Bungie, so I think it was uh, an iteration of the Tiger engine that Bungie was like, okay, we, we don't own the rights to Halo anymore, so this is our iteration of the Tiger engine for um, Halo Reach. Do what you need to with it. We're going to take our iteration of the Tiger engine, and we're, gonna, we're developing Destiny with it. So this is like version 2 of the Tiger engine, and we have version 3. So take this and make what you have to with it, which I would say is why... Halo 4 feels really good when you're aiming and shooting. It's, it's literally the same thing, right? Just refined to 343's approach to Halo 4. So the way the weapons feel, the way the weapons are designed, like the Promethean weapons are really cool. I don't like the way they feel, per se. They don't feel terrible, but they're really cool. Like, when you reload a weapon, you see it, like, it separates, and, like, it floats there, and, like, you know, you jam the, uh, the cartridge into it, and the weapon forms back. Really cool stuff. Gameplay is great. Graphics are awesome. I mean, this is an Xbox 360 game, if you think about it. I mean, it's just, of course, ported to the Master Chief Collection. As a game, it's awesome. I, I really like this, but... The story... The story isn't taking me like the, uh, like the original Halo series is. And, you know, or I should say Bungie's Halo series. Now, the whole hook with Cortana and, like, how her AI is running rampant because the older the AI gets the more unstable it gets. That's actually really interesting. So now if you look at the story of Halo 4 here, it's not necessarily about what's going on and the new evil that we unearthed here on this planet, wherever we crash land, this, this artifact, this relic, whatever. The story is really about Cortana and how Chief is, he loves, he loves Cortana. I mean, you know, it's kind of funny to think about, it. oh, he loves an AI. I mean, is that really too far-fetched today? But the story here is about Master Chief's love of Cortana and trying to save her. And that's a good hook, but it's not as compelling as Bungie's Halo stories. are. And again, I hated Halo 2. I didn't really like Halo 3. The lore expansions and world building in Halo 2 and 3 were fantastic. The stories themselves, not so good. So, 
when you summarize all of that, I know I've been monologuing for a good half hour now, literally. It just said 30 minutes when I mentioned that. 30.02, 30.03, or 30 minutes, five seconds. Uh, I think that's where the first problem with people's retrospective of Halo 4 starts is, first of all, it's not Bungie. But second of all, the story, which is a very important aspect of any game you play, regardless of how simple it is, it could be the simplest thing. But it has to be convincing. Halo 4 is... It's okay. Like, well, years from now, if I still have Master Chief Collection, my uh, availability, or at my fingertips, will I go back and play Halo 4? Probably not. Will I go back and play ODST? Most likely, yes. Will I go back and play Reach? Absolutely. Will I go back and play Halo 3? Maybe. Will I play Halo 2 again? Probably not. Maybe if, if I'm feeling and I want to do another catch run with the stream. Will I go back and play Halo 1? Undoubtedly, yes. There is no doubt in my mind that I will enjoy it for years to come, regardless of if it's through Mac or on my game's preservation means. Now, if you look at my opinion here on Halo 4 and how it carries into the general consensus, it's okay. You look at Halo 5, I really don't have any inkling to play Halo 5. Maybe. I mean, right now the answer is no. But now you look at Halo Infinite, and it's like... What happened to Halo as a franchise sucks. It really does. I mean, could we look at how it was handled internally, uh, development decisions, production decisions? I don't know how to answer that. But taking all I said as a notion, and applying it to where Halo is now, it's a shame that what established Xbox is now a thing of the past. Because if it wasn't for Halo, Xbox wouldn't have been put on the map, and people wouldn't have appreciated it as a console. If it wasn't for Halo, we wouldn't have had our memories of Xbox Live. Now, I believe that it was uh, Mech Warrior 3 and a handful of other titles that launched Xbox Live, but Halo 2 was the headline. It's kind of like how uh, Castle Wolfenstein really showcased what first-person shooters could do on PC, but Doom brought it forward. Same thing with Halo here. With uh, online connectivity, I should say. So, yes, there was a, the launch of Xbox Live, but Halo really brought it forward. So, with all of that said, I, I, I mean, I love starting off with a monologue. I don't want to monologue too long. It's probably the longest one I've done so far between uh, owning digital licenses and Halo here, but Red Bull's getting warm. Um, with streaming Friday the Thirteenth and its importance uh, about get it, playing it through an official means, I kind of forgot what's going on in Halo Four here. But let's continue with this. I'm pretty excited to see where the story goes. Is it going to be as bad as everybody says? I can't answer that. I really, I don't know. I, I haven't done any research into the story of Halo Four. So let's go. Chief, Spartan Sarah Palmer in Infinity CIC. Commander Lasky's waiting for you on the Mammoth. On our way. Easy, sir. Well, someone's overcompensating. Papa Foxtrot 766 to Spartan Palmer. We're finally in the air. Dude, this is actually kind of cool. Chief. Unfortunately for us, we've got to manually bring down a couple of particle cannons before we can get to the command post. Chief, Palmer again. The Mammoth's got jetpacks on board. If I were down there, I'd want one.
Yeah, graphically, this looks really good. gonna die there. Hold on, let me put my uh switch up. It's a giant servitor! Ah, uh, it's just still from last week. Okay. There's Gypsy Seven's Pelican out in the muck. Anyone still alive? We're here. We're alive. Got the target designator. I'll get to them and retrieve the designator. Eyes up, Gypsy. Shot? Nice, okay. Love it. That never gets old, man. There we go. Target acquired. Target suppressed. Nicely done, Chief. Railgun reloading. This stream's bad news. We can bridge it with the map.
Seriously? God damn it. We can do this. We can do this all day. It's a servant. Target acquired. That thing is a servant. Nice. Target suppressed. Nicely done, Chief. Railgun reloaded. Last get to infinity. First contact cleared, but no joy on additional targets. Gypsy moving on to secondary battle position, requesting evac for casualties. I'm on it, Commander. Calm her out. guy. I kind of miss the old funny grunts. They're weird. I love that little thing there.
barricading the far side of this canyon. I'm seeing three power sources. Shut them down so the mammoth can move through. Oh shit. Good, two more. It's cool how her voice is becoming distorted. Whoa. Wait. Seriously, man? God damn it. Good. Two more. Great. Shit, that was nice. I can't crouch jump, I forgot about that. Testing this must have been pretty interesting. Yeah, I love the way they their death animations are when you get a headshot. That's a nice touch. Oh, it's here. Okay, that I thought they were gonna come through this. Okay. Gypsy Company moving out. There's another servitor. I don't like the way this new sniper rifle rifle iteration sounds. Not the same.
Oh, we don't have access to that thing anymore. Okay. Dicey there for a minute. All hands form up on us. Lasky, this is Infinity. Status. Mammoth's in pretty bad shape, sir. She'll make it to the objective as long as nobody starts throwing rocks at us. Not a chance we can take. I'm sending teams out to pull some of their fire off you so you can make it to the gravity well. Roger that, sir. Gypsy, let's move. Shadow Company, Castle Company. Put some pressure on those other particle cannons. Oh, a rainbow. That's cool. On station, ready to assist. Shadow actual to infinity. Encountering enemy air. Significant EOF closer to the emplacements. Yeah, this is gorgeous, man. Okay, folks. Terrain's too rough around these tributaries. Assault force. Back on the mammoth. Anyone not on board is getting left behind. They don't care about you. They replaced you. Blast it. It's okay. How? All right, seal it How up. is this okay? Mammoth is mobile. How is putting you at risk because I can't hold it together okay? Chief, do you even understand what rampancy is? Crazy bitch mode, really? that's what I mean. We don't just shut down. Our cognitive processes begin dividing exponentially according to our total knowledge base. We literally think ourselves to death. Interesting. You know I won't let that happen. And if it happens anyway? You're not married, Chief! Like we're plan skipping here? I love this. 117, Lasky. Go, Commander. We got significant blockage up ahead. I think this is about it for the Mammoth. The command post for the particle cannons is through that trench. Sir, I can move faster alone. We'll see you back on Infinity, Commander. Lasky out. Lasky? Heads up! I love that sound. Never gets old. Ever. See? Oh, 
sniping here. Oh, that's, uh, that's lame. Yeah, the fact that we could sprint this chief is kind of cool. I like this. Ah, okay, it's a canyon. Ah, suicide grunt, okay. Say, what the fuck is shooting me? Glowy spots. No witnesses. No witnesses. Cortana to infinity. We're entering the Forerunner structure. Like, I want to emote. I feel like I'm playing Destiny here. Breaking up, but coordinates received, Infinity. Okay, we gotta follow this guy? No? This elevator should take us directly this was gonna to split open. Infinity provided. Almost like those sentinels wanted us to get the particle cannons offline. This could be a trap. It's a you trap! See that like there's a second possibility? It's a trap! <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah, graphically, this looks great, man. Whoa. We've reached the coordinates. This looks like the place. And those are all going to suddenly start shooting at us. Watch. The particle cannon network must use these arrays for targeting and guidance. It's an automated system, so it won't technically allow me to redirect the cannons to fire on one another. Cortana to Infinity. The guns should be offline. How's it look from up there? Infinity. 
Cortana. 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 Yeah, the level designs in this are pretty cool. I will say. The graphics are awesome. There's that in uh in symbol again. Who are you? I am what remains. Of the four, once known as the librarian. Back some cookies, son. Their memories were retained to assist humanity on their path to the mantle. Though well, sadly, that plan is now at risk. The didact is leaving Requiem. It's Voldemort's Soon. sister! We must not allow it. Leaving. He seeks this. The composer. A device which will allow him to finally contain the greatest enemy ever faced by the Forerunners. You. Mankind spread into the stars with an unexpected, desperate violence. Entire systems fell before the Didax warrior servants rose to halt the aggression. Hmm. What I what I call discovery? The rape the of the Didact natural world. Exhausted the humans. Line from Jurassic Park. So striking and prominent. His sentence was severe. We had no way of knowing that the Forerunners were not your only enemy. Humanity hadn't been expanding. They were running. Weakened from our conflict, we were no match for the parasite which pursued you. The Forerunners made plans for a final great journey. But the Didact refused to yield our mantle of responsibility. He would save all life in the galaxy. At a cost. At a cost. There's always a cost. In the Forerunner's quest for transcendence, the Composer had been intended to bridge the organic and digital realms. It would have made us immortal. Hmm. Kind of sounds like humanity's but current situation, sound. doesn't it? The stored personalities fragmented. And our attempts to return them to biological states created only abominations. Such moral concerns faded from the Didact's attention. The flood only assimilated living tissue. The composer would provide the Didact his solution and his revenge. The Prometheans. They're human. The beginning. We would have encrypted your entire race if we had not removed the composer from his care and imprisoned him here. But then you woke him up. Reclaimer. When I indexed mankind for repopulation, I hid seeds from the didact. Seeds which would lead to an eventuality. Your physical evolution, your combat skill, even your Ancilla Cortana. You are the culmination of a thousand lifetimes of planning. Planning for what? He has found us. Even in death, a meddling continues.
Reclaimer. The gene song I placed within you contains many gifts, including an immunity to the composer. But it must be unlocked. How? Relinquish your contact essence. Your evolutionary journey must be accelerated. Can I defeat the Didact without it? No. Then do it. Prepare. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little checked out as far as the story goes. Armor lock? I do admire the interactivity with these uh, Promethean enemies. Like, they're, they're, I mean, the dogs are kind of weird, but these guys here are cool, especially with the way they disintegrate. I like that effect. Actually, hold on a second. Oh, we can't watch that again? All right, that's fine. Chief, what happened? Your bio readings are all over the map. It's a long story, but I know what the didact's after. I know that part. The librarian filled me in when she snatched me from the system. But what I don't know is what she did to you. Damn it. Sierra 117 to infinity. What's our status? We're taking a beating up here. Does infinity have a shot on the gravity well? Yeah, you can't do nothing! You can't do nothing! All right! That's how you do it. Looks like we're blocked. Chief, head down and find a way to destroy that shield.
sure there's nothing I missed over here. Okay. This is fun. I love flying around like this. It's so cool. It's like I'm There's hitting a baseball bat with something. Infinity cannot handle that kind of punishment. Not again. This isn't about us or this ship anymore. Sir, we've seen what the Didact is capable of. If we let him leave this world, humanity will be at risk. Look, I understand what you think you saw. Think? With all due respect, sir, I know what I saw. And with all due respect to you, soldier, I'm not willing to jeopardize my ship because of the hallucinations of an aging Spartan and his malfunctioning AI. Hmm. Sir, what if he's right? Nav, as soon as we know we're airtight, I want a course laid into Karanay Station. Tom, prepare a warning beacon. I will not allow you to leave this planet! Cortana. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to do that. Commander Lasky. Pursuant to Article 55 of UNSC Regulation 12, 14572, I'm ordering you to remove that AI's data chip and retire it for final dispensation. I don't want to. You don't want me to. Remove Please. the chip now, Commander. Give me that chip. The didact has to be stopped. If you won't do that, I will. Hmm. I am ordering you to surrender that AI! No, sir. Ha ha ha! Nice! Lieutenant! Arrest that man! Huh? Captain! Captain. Get word to Earth that trouble is coming. Cortana and I will do what we can back here. Yeah! Sticking it to the man. Interesting. I command you to kill up that AI! I can give you over 40,000 reasons. Why I know that sun isn't real. I know it because the emitter's Rayleigh effect is disproportionate to its suggested size. I know it because its stellar cycle is more symmetrical than that of an actual star. But for all that, 
I'll never actually know if it looks real, if it feels real. Before this is all over, promise me you'll figure out which one of us is the machine. Excuse me. So what's your plan? Shoot everything. That's good. Infinity's tracked the Didax vessel to a docking structure. Love Southeast his voice. Ship. So cool. We'll jump ship as Infinity exits the roof. You know, I was sent down here with orders to prevent you from leaving. In case you'd already gone, I took the precaution of ordering a pelican. Outfitted for full combat pursuit. All right. It's ours, I guess. I hope to God you're wrong about that forerunner. Chief. But in the vent, you're not. Chief. Good luck. Both of you. The massive mole on his cheek. Molly, molly, molly. Girl for a ride. Whoa! Hey, hey, this is a PG. This is an R-rated stream, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I like that shot where at the beginning it shows she's full size, but then as we get closer to her and insert her into our helmet, she's not. That's pretty cool. The didact used this composer to create the Prometheans from ancient humans. If he wants to finish the job, he'll have to find it first. Our best bet to stop him is keep him firmly on Requiem. Oh, whoa, dude, the texture is I yeah. Oh man. Initiating pre-flight diagnostics. Forward auto cannon, check. Lateral rail turrets, check. Main thrusters, check. Auxiliary boosters, check. All right. Keying engine. Once more on the It may be a while before we find another ride home. You know that, right? It'll be okay. Marking two of the larger facilities on your HUD. They're acting as traffic control for resources moving to and from the satellite. Hmm. If we disrupt their communications, I can forge an override code and convince it to lower those defenses. Oh, it's like Halo Reach, okay. How do we go down? Okay. I guess that's how we go down. Damn, 
What the fuck? Oh boy. Blood? Oh, okay, that's from before. That's weird, it took so long to... There are millions of transmissions passing through this structure, not simply the ones controlling the movement through the satellite shield. Can you isolate the satellite communications? Not quickly, and shutting them all down is not an option. But destroying the system's attenuators should flood the network. Of course, if Infinity wasn't on the way, they could all load the attenuators remotely. the point. The attenuators are housed in Faraday enclosures. I'd bet there's a release around here somewhere. This is much better. There we go. There's another quadrant of enemies here. Yeah, the state designs in this are pretty cool, man. I love the architecture. Awesome. Okay, the structure contains three central attenuators. Sever those connections and we should be good. I love the saw, this is nice. Up ahead. Signal traffic is almost entirely blocking out the satellite communications. Only one more target left. Yeah, this saw is fucking awesome, dude. It's an LMG. Love it. Ah, we gotta kill the knights to get this. Interesting. Okay. Transmission buffers are overflowing. Get us to the second tower. The others scatter like embers over sand. And you, the librarian's champion, is a. Cortana, 
Where's this coming from? more difficult. Hard to tell if these ships are smaller or larger. And Gangs, what's up, man? Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Uh, I was in the middle of shooting shit. I'm sorry I didn't say hello right away. What's going on? Dave's been all right. Got some Halo 4 here. Interesting to say the least. Not too bad so far. I'm curious to see where the story goes. to lower pelican, okay. This node's different than the previous tower. The source of the tower communications is a carrier Whoa. wave generator located somewhere inside. It looks like the carrier wave generator is located at the far end of this chamber. Find us a way across. This okay. gondola should do the trick. Look for its activation switch. Activate the gondola. Okay. I could do that. To take a page out of our old playbook, I'm going to tune your shields to emit an EMP at the same frequency as the communication network. All you'll need to do to trigger it is to make physical contact with the carrier wave generator. I feel like Rambo right now, it's fucking awesome. was a higher difficulty I would have been dead. We're in business. Back to the gondola. Back 
damn suiciders. Thank God for the uh, track point system here. Okay, what about yours? Are you hearing him? No. Didact? The shooting is great, but otherwise I'm like, eh, the story's alright. I mean, it's okay. Top of that platform. You only have to enter the field to trigger the EMP. M. E. E. Give it a second. Transmissions between the towers and the satellite have ceased. You are a fool. Even now, your kind tinkers with the composer in the shadow of the third ring. Children and fire who disregard the welfare of the galaxy. Oh, we gotta fly somewhere else now, okay. Now, I could just fly there, but we have to use regular means or the game's gonna glitch out. Do you truly believe these theatrics can prevent my departure? In yes.
Skyfox, as usual, is gorgeous here. Hello again! I said hi before! You having connection problems again? we keep running into are being controlled from this tower. Get me to the control room and we might be able to reposition them to block the Didac ship from leaving. Take that. a control facility at the top of the tower. We need to be there yesterday. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I 
dying. I'm never going to play this through regular means again. I think that, yeah, that's all of them. Nice. Let's just do a clean, uh, quick sweep, make sure everything's clear. No witnesses! Everybody, let's move on. Oh, it's a lot like Halo Three. Let me get this fire control. Tapping into this fire central net. They're mine. Now to imprison them. Ships online. They're leaving. I'm sorry. I don't know what. Track those liches. We can go across them to get to the Didact ship. Wait. Across them? Yes. Um, there. There are several liches moving in formation towards the Didact ship. We're only going to have one shot at this. There we go, all right. Uh, we're gonna lose our weapons, god damn it. Is the knife? Why can't we use that? Cortana, what's happening? I don't know. Hang on! Gonna go into that hole. Yep. They're jumping into slip space. Get below deck. No 
time. Excuse me, sorry. This is pretty cool, man. The skyboxes are gorgeous. Like, graphically and, like, Cortana. Still here. this game's engine is really good. A halo? Installation 3. It's where Infinity found the coordinates to Requiem. Then why are they bypassing it? Because the composer's not on the ring. What are you waiting for? That station's not going to save itself. Graphically speaking, this is pretty cool, man. Remember, this is Xbox 360 tech. This is not Xbox One tech. This is Xbox 360 tech repurposed for Xbox One. It's pretty cool. Into the console. We do that a lot in this game. Insert me, Chief! This is UNSC Master Chief to base. Do you know? Oh, frame rate stutter. Whoa. I read you. This is Sandy Tilton of Ivanov Station. We're under attack. They're after a Forerunner artifact you took from the Halo Ray. How do you know about that? Doctor. I need you to protect that artifact until we arrive. Send whatever. Do you know what that car said? Rich said to me after our first game of chess. Cortana. Even I don't call it by name anymore. Correct your approach. Yes, but he also said he works better alone. I can see why you chose him, Catherine. Cortana. I'm your greatest achievement, and you detest. Hold up. Now. Bitches, be crazy, man. I think that's uh, what Halo Halo 4's official uh, tagline should be. Bitches be crazy. Halo 4, bitches be crazy. Halo Combat Evolved. Halo 4, bitches be crazy. I'm sorry, I just can't stop them. It's like a thousand of me arguing all at once. Dr. Tilson, are you there? Oh, thank God. When your signal cut off, I Doctor, get... listen to me. You have to issue the order to evacuate the station. We've been trying. The Covenant, they've already taken over the landing base. Send me your coordinates. I'll see what I can do about clearing an evac route on my way to you. Need a There we go, we don't have to reload now. Hell yeah.
Base seven is secure, and we're moving toward your position now. Nice. One thing I will say, this game does very well, is making you feel badass. I gotta reload this. Controls. Tilson's inside the door over there. I desperately hope you know why all this is happening. Because Cortana's crazy. Objectivity isn't doing me a whole lot of good right now. Hold on. I'll start us down. The device you recovered was a forerunner weapon. The commander of that ship wants it back. Wants it back? You don't think you can remove... It can't leave the station. You know that, right? We don't have any choice, Doctor. It's not a matter of choice. It took three months, and, and the biggest starship the UNSC could throw at it just to relocate it here. Unless you're a lot stronger than you look. It's not going anywhere. Can you give Cortana access to the station's supply manifest? What for? If we can't move the composer, we have to make sure the Didact can't either. Oh, wait. We have years of work invested here. Inventory lists seven excavation grade havoc mines. Just one of those would turn this base into a pinata. I'm sorry, Doctor. Keep routing your people to the evac centers. Once we take care of the composer, you won't have much time. I'll uh, make sure the nukes are primed so you can. Detonate them remotely. Maybe next time you rescue us... ...and give us more time to pack? Next time. What if there isn't a next time? Huh?
Doctor, what was that? It's the covenant. The first evac shuttle. The station should be equipped with outer turrets. If we can reactivate them, I can program the station's defenses to provide cover for the evacuation. Okay, okay, I'll send you the coordinates. Seal the door behind me. I love this weapon. Dr. Tilson, are you there? I'm here. Any luck? Cortana's bringing the defense grid online now. Okay. That's it. I hear it. We'll broadcast the final evac orders. The nuke? We're rigging it now. Meet us back on the upper platform, and we'll help you get it to the artifact. Reminds me of Alien. This is fucking awesome. 
pull this off and then... Great feeling overpowered, seriously. Keep them away from it. They found the composer. Stop them, Chief! You can't have us with another talented in this year! Dr. Tilson, the composer's location's compromised. You've got to get that nuke down here. Or not, I need it now. They're throwing everything they've got at us to get the composer. I know we're supposed to use the mantis here, but I don't want to. This uh, floor is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> nice.
fucking off. Ah, right, one more! Wait, 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 wait. I think that's everything. I was about to say, if we weren't able to land on that, I'd be very disappointed. Tilson, where's the warhead? Dr. Tilson. Head back to the elevator platform. I'll keep trying to race her. That was kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, they really don't want us using a Banshee here. The Havoc Mines will be in one of the cargo bays. Start us up. Insert Cortana. Oh, activate elevator, sorry. Status on the rest of the station. I can't believe he did that. Cortana, I need that info. <sighs> Look, don't think about the didact. Don't think about the composer. Only focus on finding me, Tilson. Tilson. Sandra Kay. Female, 51 years of age. Doctor of Archaeology, Fagasti Institute. Biosignature stable on 350 level. B deck. Thank you, Cortana. Compromise the station's hull. The Didact's taken the composer. Get these people to the evac centers. Taken? Taken how? Tap the flight deck. Find us something that can carry a payload. Wait. Something's happening. It's not good. Cortana, can you access the station's defense systems? They're not responding. Cortana. Jeez. It's... Damn, dude.
That was cool. I will admit, that was pretty cool. Good push up, Chief. Push somebody in a minute, that. Are you okay? I monitored the data poles. I could hear them. What was left of them? We need to move. These people are gone. And more will follow if the Didad reaches Earth. They'll pair you with another AI. Maybe even another Cortana model if Halsey lets them. That's not going to happen. It won't be me. You know that, right? Spinning up a broadsword in Hangar C-11. Whatever the librarian did to you obviously worked. Cortana. It's not over. Not yet. Not yet. Interesting. That was a cool cutscene. Yeah, this, that was probably the best cutscene yet. And four here. It looks like a fighter jet. That's fucking cool. Yeah, some of the textures are a little rough here, man. I mean, obviously, they, they scale stuff for, like, wide shots, close-up shots. So this here is more of, like, a medium shot, but when you get up close to it, you can easily tell... That it's uh, old gen stuff. Even though it still looks good, it's it's clearly visible that it's Xbox 360. Needless to say, this still does look very good. <sighs> Excuse me. Approaching the Didact ship in 200 kilometers. Once we get on board, we'll find the bridge. He's on the move again. The fighter's shields aren't rated for slip space. No, but the didacs are. Imagine if one day, like, space travel like this would be possible. That'd be fucking awesome. Broadsword's hull integrity is stable. We'll be safe as long as we stay below the didact shield. Where's the composer? Close. I should be able to guide us to it. Simple enough.
Affirmative, sir. Where's the captain? We can't then take too kindly to his abandoning you on Requiem. I'm afraid I'll have to do. The didact's got the composer. We're in a broadsword hearing act. It's fucking massive, payload. dude. On approach to delivery. That's what would have happened in real life. Dude, come on, man. Seriously. Oh, okay, there are air brakes. Gotcha. Hearts. This is uh, pretty fucking massive. It's like a Death Star run here, man. There it is. No light. Infinity. The Dynad just closed off our engines to the composer. Take care of the guns. Shoot the Starbiters! Okay, I see.
Class 1. Infinity, you're clear. Roger that, Chief. You might want to back up a little. Main battery, fire! Clean hit. We're proceeding to insertion. Acknowledged. We'll be on station if you need us. Make sure you give the didact our regards. Infinity out. Now what do we do? We are our way out? I don't know. Plan B. Steakhouse? Okay. I'm down for a burger. I haven't had a burger in a, a good burger in a while, actually. Ooh, yes. Love it. I know, I'm supposed to know what to do, but... We'll have to deploy the warhead manually. How and where? I always know what to do. I always know what to do. Just give me a second. Keep scanning for the composer. We'll figure it out on the way. They just chopped my arm off. That was fucking awesome. Thank God for the saw, dude. Seriously. Remember, uh, each stage has the curated weapon loadout they want us to use. The devs wanted us to go in heavy-handedly. System like on Requiem. Find a way to access it. I'll try to route us to the composer. Put me in the system. design is pretty cool here.
can't control oh. what my processes are doing. The stronger threats keep reprioritizing themselves over me. What about the didact? I can't hide much. Is it a good idea to use? I'll try to move you to the composer again. Is this a good idea to use? With a nuclear bomb strapped to our back? Where are you? Didact is blocking the composer from me. For some reason, actually it's the architecture and everything, it's reminding me of The Ascent, which was actually really good for Xbox. That was an excellent game. Loved it. That was actually kind of cool. I didn't mean I meant to kill those things. How do we uh, get over there? We can barely. Oh shit! We time it right. Our what? Should carry us through the low gravity. The man cannon. Chief. Chief. Once that warhead is primed, the window for getting out of here is going to be pretty slim. I know. We'll be back for Halo 5, this Master Chief. Don't worry about it. This and is pretty so cool. You come at last. Uh, this is gonna be a boss battle. Okay. Activity! Significant slip space event building under the composer. He's powering it up. Oh, 
Oh, dude, that's awesome. The Didact shielded himself inside the composer. The nuke won't do us any good unless we can disable that barrier. Find me a terminal. I've got to do something you're not going to like. What did you just do? I ejected my rampant personality spike into the system. If I do that in each of those beams, the copy can overwhelm the composer's shield. Get ready! I was wondering that I was wondering what would break first. Kill 100 knights. Cool. That's it. It's working. I hate those things. I think everybody does. And design-wise, they're supposed to, and I get it, but they suck.
He he's never shot it like that. Interesting. The urgency here is actually pretty well done. I like this. He's not flying like he was. Look. Boss battle. Why is it? Well, at least the subtitles are on. Humanity's imprisonment is a kindness. This isn't a sex party! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> In that case, you might have to return the favor. The capacitor for mankind is misplaced. Your capacitor? I'm not doing this for mankind. Where did the cutscene voices are? That beep is really grating. Thank you. Jesus. Cortana. I would love to see a game speak entirely in Morse code. That'd be awesome. Cortana, come in. Turbo we'll Sierra one more time. strangest thing you've seen all day but 
if we're here. It worked. You did it. Just like you always do. So how do we get out of here? We're in the Matrix. Take it out. I'm not coming with you this time. Huh? What? Most of me is down there. I only held enough back to get you off the ship. No. That's not... We go together. It's already done. Dude. I am not leaving you here. John. I've waited so long to do that. It was my job to take care of you. We were supposed to take care of each other. And we did. Cortana, please. Johnny. Here's Johnny. <laughs> I'm not crying, seriously. My eyes have a little bit of sleep left over in them, even though I thought I cleared them out earlier. Dude, that sucks. This the, the Cortana Arcanist is really good. Epilogue. We beat it! Alright! Yeah, this is pre-rendered. His design in 4 is interesting, but I, I don't know. He's a little too tanky. I fit what's good though is they preserve this look while also taking their own using their own spin on it. That's cool. But uh I don't know. I don't know how I, I'm I, I think it's because I know it's not Bungie doing this. I think that's why everybody feels the way they do about it. But yeah, it's it's good, it's not great. Halo 4 is I wouldn't say very good. The gameplay is very good. The story is good, the Cortana arc is excellent. Like that was very well done. I give Halo 4 a 7 out of 10. A modest 7 out of 10. Not every Halo game has that impact, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Not everything has to be mind-blowingly awesome and an incredible experience. This is a this is a good experience. But there's just something with the Bungie's telling of the first and uh, story and Reach's story that are particularly special. Mind if I join you? Mind if I join you? What? Join you? Of course not, sir. At ease, Chief. Feels kind of odd for you to call me, sir. Why is the frame rate really weird on this? Beautiful, isn't she? I don't get to see her often enough. Also, the enemy was kind of wasted. I was expecting some type of battle or something. Cool I design, just under you lost. In the Corbulo Military Academy? Never saw Earth in person until I was an adult, but... I still think of her as home. You don't talk much, do you? Chief, I won't pretend to know how you feel. I've lost people I care about, but... Never anything like you're going through. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. 
just say that, like, soldiers and humanity are two different things. I mean, soldiers aren't machines. We're just people. I would say that, yeah, the Cortana arc oh, here is actually Damn, dude. said that to me once about being a machine I'm taking a screenshot of hour of victory, we taste only defeat. I ask why. We are foreigners, guardians of all that exists. The roots of the galaxy have grown deep under our careful tending. Where there is life, the wisdom of our countless generations has saturated the soil. Our strength is a luminous sun towards which all intelligence blossoms and the impervious shelter beneath which it has prospered. I stand before you, accused of the sin of ensuring foreigners... He needs a vacation, man. Seriously. Master Chief needs a break. From this fate and a shower, probably. Forced to Skin's probably all clammy. Receive. Humanity stands as the greatest threat in the galaxy. Refusing to eradicate them is a fool's gambit. We squander eons in the darkness while they seize our triumphs for their own. The mantle of responsibility for all things belongs to forerunners alone. Think of my acts as you will. But do not doubt the reality. The reclamation has already begun. And That's we're cool. to stop it. Hmm. Halo 4. Cortana arc is excellent. The Diadect, I feel, was a waste opportunity, wasted opportunity. And I find it interesting because at the end of Halo 3, we formed like a uh, a pact with the government. Government. Pact or a friendship with the Covenants. And that wasn't alluded to here at all. I, I feel that's a missed opportunity. Uh, but if I was to score Halo 4, I would say it's a 7 out of 10. Gameplay is excellent. But the... The enemies, I'm trying to... I can't remember their names. But those Forerunner enemies, if you want to call them that. The Diadect enemies, whatever. Knights and stuff. They're okay. I, I mean, I, it's kind of hard to try and outdo what Bungie did with the Covenant. You don't have to outdo. You can do your own thing. And 343 Industries' own thing is okay. It's not terrible. It's not great either. I don't know, man. It's just, it boils down to the fact that these were some impossibly large shoes to fill. And I can only imagine what the devs felt with that pressure while making this. Like, it, it's it's impossible to recreate that magic. Like, you have to, you have to create your own magic. But... You can't really do that because you were handed the Halo mantle and you had to do your own thing with it. So it's a weird juxtaposition. And it's a very hard juxtaposition to overcome. I think that's what 
it all boils down to when you play 343 industry iteration of Halo. It's good. It's not great. It doesn't have the magic that the Bungie, especially the first uh, Halo and Halo Reach and ODST. Halo 2 and 3, uh, again, I'm in, I, I don't like it. But this was good. I enjoyed it. It's not something I will revisit time to time, but to say that I experienced Halo 4 finally, I could say that I did. I would say overall it's good. It's a 7 out of 10. It's solid. It plays well. The story doesn't really have misses. It just has, I wouldn't say wasted opportunities either, but the didact I think could have been done with a little more gusto. Like, it's cool that he, he's, I was thinking about this while watching cutscenes. Like, he's a means to an end, and that that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, but... It's impossible to not compare this to what the original Halo games established. And and I think that's where all the problems stemming from 343 handling Halo come from. And I have no interest to play 5. I really don't. Uh, I am not interested in Infinite whatsoever. It's just they keep trying to reboot and reboot and reboot. That's a problem. So if Halo 5 should be on sale for dirt cheap, like I'm talking 10, 20, no, no more than 20 bucks, I will pick it up. And that will encourage me to play Halo 5 just to see what's going on and then play Halo Infinite. But right now, as it stands, if I ever want to revisit Halo, Master Chief Collection is never leaving my Xbox. Digital licenses be damned. This was good. And it's, it's cool to say, hey, I experienced all of Master Chief Collection. I'm happy that I did. This is awesome. This is certainly a title that is, again, never going to leave my hard drive or my Xbox because Halo is that important to me. And undoubtedly, it's very important to a lot of people. As I've talked about many times, as I've talked many times about how Halo established Xbox and the importance of that and how it translated into either A, you bought an Xbox because of Halo or you heard of it through the grapevine, like you're friends of a friend or like, dude, have you heard of Halo? And you're like, what's that? I have an Xbox. I'm not sure what that is. And you're like, dude, you have all these other games. You bought it for whatever reason, play Halo and everyone. And Halo 2 was uh, Xbox original, and then Halo 3 was an Xbox 360 title, Halo ODST, Halo Reach, and here Halo 4 was all for 3. And it was like Halo Wars and all that stuff. I, I never got into that. Not an argument. I identify with the fact that they're pretty good games, but it's not my thing. So, Closing out the Master Chief Collection, I will say that Halo, the original, is iconic and still stands with the best of the day. And that is a testament to just how well it was made. Halo 2, the story was absolutely terrible. The world building with the covenants and the roots and the whole hierarchy of the prophets, that was awesome. The grave mine, uh, I hated the grave mine. Really hated the grave mine. Interesting concept, but I absolutely hated it. Halo 3 of the original trilogy still plays the best out of all of them. Just the story is paper thin. However, that is made up by the fact that Halo 3 its fun factor is through the roof. It is a lot of fun. Halo ODST introduces the human elements and character-to-character -character interactions that are awesome. Very striking. Great story. Very noirish. And then Reach is just the culmination of everything that Bungie learned with their hands on the franchise and, all the again, all the things they learned throughout developing and Halo 4 is as good as it could get in the hands of another developer under all of that pressure. And I think it closed the Cortana narrative. Like, the whole Cortana thing here. If I was to look back at Halo years from now, Halo 4, I would say that the whole Cortana arc was excellent. Like, the, the whole story was excellent. Because remember, she was a fixture with us throughout the entire original trilogy or original five games and then 343. So when 343 closed out the Cortana arc, Excellent job. Gameplay, excellent. Overall story, eh, not as interesting. But that's not a bad thing either. Halo 5, can't talk about Halo 5 because I haven't played it. I heard a lot of mixed things about it. And uh, we're going to leave it at that. So one day, again, if Halo Infinite, I almost said Reach, I always get that mixed up for some reason. If Halo Infinite should be on sale, it will probably be a sale at the end of this year. I'll probably pick it up, considering all the new games that are coming out. Microsoft's going to want to push Halo Infinite. All things considered, I'll give it a shot. But as it stands, once again, we wrapped up Master Chief. Good shit, man. Good shit. 
And with that, everybody, who's watching here on Twitch or who will watch this on YouTube and you get this far, thanks for sticking around for this. I'll be back tomorrow. We'll do some Destiny tomorrow. I'm a little overdue. We got to do some of the uh, story stuff and just, like, you know, see what's going on. Destiny at this point, just closing out with this, it's kind of something I'm going to dabble in because I I've been busy with a lot of other things gaming-wise, so... On the screen. So we'll go into Destiny, and then I intend to stream Warhammer Bolt Gun. I gotta uh, unzip it and test it out, make sure it works. But tomorrow will be Destiny, and we'll take it from there. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thank you for stopping by on this Monday, Tuesday, Jesus Christ, Tuesday, June 20th, 2023, as I just checked. Thank you again. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace out, everybody.